Welcome, welcome to Fearless with Jason Whitlock. I am Jason Whitlock. Happy Monday uh, to you and yours. Isn't it like President's Day, I think, or something? Yeah, I know my bank's closed. I tried to do some banking and figured out they were closed. Hey, fantastic, awesome, unbelievable show uh, planned for you today. You know why? Because it's just me and you, baby. It is just me and you. I'm going all in on this Jawan Howard, Michigan, Wisconsin situation. I told Steve Kim and everybody else, scram. Uh, I got to do that. I, I, I got to do this myself. Uh, I'm going to start a fire and try to burn this whole thing down. This will be one of my greatest fire starters, I hope, uh, if I pull it off. What I need you guys to do right now, start, go to youtube.com slash Jason Whitlock, hit that subscribe, hit those likes, get those notifications, leave a comment, get in the chat, push this show out, be a good fearless soldier, go out and recruit for the fearless army because what you're about to hear from me, you're not going to hear anyplace else. You've been listening to everybody in the mainstream corporate media talk about this Jawan Howard situation. They're not going to cut it to the bone the way that I'm about to do here. All right, let's get it rolling. Michigan basketball coach Jawan Howard believes he's untouchable. And why shouldn't he? The rules imposed by our China-influenced institu institutions of government, education, sport, media, corporate and social, and art grant him a bigoted form of privilege. Howard is black, elite, and a supporter of left-wing social justice. He checks all the boxes for the elimination of standards, accountability, and adult expectations. Our current culture immunizes Howard from real consequence. He took the black scene, the alleged experimental cure for bigotry that injects people with the mindset that black people are inferior and can't be held to the same standards as whites, Asians, and Latinos. Howard is fully blacksinated and boosted. He can't be touched. We saw that yesterday in the handshake line after the Wisconsin Badgers routed Howard's Wolverines incensed that Wisconsin coach Greg Gard called a timeout with 15 seconds to play. Howard yelled at and attempted to walk past Gard without the customary handshake. Gard placed his hand on Howard's elbow and tried to explain his use of a timeout. Howard responded by grabbing Gard's shirt in the center of his chest and then pointing a finger in Gard's face while repeatedly shouting, don't effing touch me. Players and assistant coaches separated Howard and Gard. Moments later, Howard reached across several people and struck Wisconsin assistant coach Joe Krabenhoff. Howard's blow ignited a fracas among players from both teams. Howard's on-court post-game behavior was embarrassing and justifies a season-ending suspension. Howard's post-game interview was troubling and justifying his firing. Watch this clip. I didn't like the timeout being called, and I'll be totally honest with you. Uh, I thought it was uh, you know, not necessary at that moment, uh, especially being a large lead. Uh, and then for we'll have the timeout uh, be called with three seconds, four seconds to go, you know, I thought that that was, you know, what I felt wasn't fair to our guys. And so that's, that's what happened. There was no timeout called with three or four seconds to play. Howard is either confused or misspoke. Given time to collect his thoughts, Howard had no real idea what transpired at the end of the game. With 48 seconds to play and leading by 19 points, Wisconsin emptied its bench and inserted its scrubs, including several walk-ons. Howard instructed his players to compete until the final second. The Wolverines pressed full court 
and caused a Badger turnover. Listen to Howard's recollection. Oh, we was, it wasn't a press. We was just five pressure defense, man to man. That's what five is for us. So it wasn't press. It was pressure defense, man to man. Got it. Howard was in t a total fog during his post-game media session. It's like he blacked out. He lost a game and lost his mind. Here's what he had to say next. You know, I addressed with uh, the head coach that uh, I will remember that <laughs> because of that timeout. And uh, for someone to touch me, and I think that was un very uncalled for for him to touch me as we were verbalizing and communicating with one another. So um, that's what ended up happening. And that's what escalated it. <clears throat> so let me get this straight. Getting touched in a handshake line is not unusual. It's customary. Howard escalated the situation when he hit a Wisconsin assistant coach in the face. Watch what happened when a reporter followed up with a follow-up question to Howard. Well, as far as touching, I mean, obviously, it's obvious touching the handshake line there. It must have been more than that. Oh, yeah, it was more than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Touching, touching me unnecessary wasn't, wasn't cause for that when we were talking. And at that, at that point, you know, I thought that was, you know, time to protect myself. Five to 10 seconds after being touched by Greg Gard, Howard protected himself by attacking Joe Krabenhoff. It makes no sense. Howard sounded like a 12-year-old playground bully at best and a violent criminal with no emotional control at worst. What he did not sound like was a leader, an adult capable of counseling young people to not be easily provoked. You can't strike a man because someone touched your elbow or stepped on your favorite gym shoes. Striking the Wisconsin assistant was bad. The rationalization of it was far worse. How can Michigan have confidence in Howard's ability to lead? Howard has less emotional control than his players. 22 years ago, Indiana University fired Bobby Knight, ending the era of out of control bully coaches. 20 years before Knight's dismissal, Ohio State dumped its legendary football coach, Woody Hayes, for throwing a punch at a Clemson player who was wearing a full uniform and helmet. Things we used to tolerate and overlook decades ago, we no longer do. The Don Draper, Roger Serling, Pete Campbell, and Mad Men era is gone. Juwan Howard can't be retroactively grandfathered in. Replacing Mad Men with mad and untouchable black people is a mistake and equally harmful and racist. But that's what we're doing. We're codifying cultural norms that lower or eliminate all standards of behavior and achievement for black people. You can see it in the education system, the criminal justice system, and the sports world. Leftists are defining black people as incapable of meeting traditional cultural norms. We've been defined as a special group worthy of a capital B by the Associated Press that distinguishes us from all the other people on the planet. The behavior of black people has been deemed irrelevant. Only the actions of white people matter. From the use of the N-word all the way to murder, we only care about the behavior of one group, white people. That's why it's forbidden to talk about the behavior George Floyd exhibited that contributed to his death. Discussing Colin Kaepernick's career-destroying and illogical behavior, it's frowned upon. Criticizing LeBron James or Barack Obama is an unforgivable sin. Floyd, Kaepernick, and James, and Obama, they're all untouchable. 
when people believe their actions are above scrutiny and irrelevant, their behavior typically becomes more erratic. That's what we're witnessing with Jawan Howard. I first met Jawan when he was a 19-year-old sophomore at the University of Michigan and the most mature member of the famed Fab Five. I covered the team for the Ann Arbor News. Howard was one of the most impressive young people I had met at the time. He was mature, respectful, and classy. He had a huge heart. He brought his best friend from childhood, a kid everyone called Juice, to Michigan. Juice was small and smart. He and Howard were inseparable. At the time, it seemed understood that Howard used his athletic gift to empower and educate his best friend from home. I've always been impressed with Jawan Howard. I'm shocked to see him struggle with his emotions and behavior. A year ago, he had an over-the-top, on-court confrontation with Maryland coach Mark Turgeon. Turgeon says Howard threatened to kill him. Watch this, watch how that all unfolded. But here is what happened. See Juwan Howard starting to yell out something at the other side, and then there was some jawing back and forth between he and Mark Turgeon. Look at this. I mean, it, it got really testy, Sean. It, it did, and the officials did a good job of stepping in before what was a bad situation. It could have gotten progressively worse. <coughs> and now, what is always a tough job if you're an official, especially at this level, this became even more so because you're going to have to make sure that what happened as we went to break doesn't seep over. I mean, look at the effect of the assistants that had to keep Juwan Howard back. And he was hot. You see Daryl Morcell was in the mix as well. That was Larry Serrato ejecting Juwan Howard. Hey man, I'm telling you. I got no issue with Jawan Howard. I like Jawan Howard. But that was an ugly scene. Michigan took no disciplinary action against Howard. The team was nationally ranked and would eventually advance to the Elite Eight of the NCAA tournament. Howard should have been disciplined a year ago. But he's untouchable and knows it. That's why he was so offended that guard had the audacity to protect his bench players from Michigan's in-game full-court press. Guards' walk-ons were getting overwhelmed and embarrassed. The final 48 seconds of a blowout are a walk-on's reward for practicing every day. Upset by the loss, Howard decided to ruin the reward guard gave his scrubs. When guard countered with a timeout, Howard emoted and eventually erupted. Joe Krabenhoff is white. Had he struck Jawan Howard, Krabenhoff would have been fired Sunday night. He would be portrayed as the second coming of Derek Chauvin. Howard has somehow been cast as the victim. Calls for his removable as Michigan head coach are being framed as a racist overreaction. For white bigots and black supporters of black inferiority, holding Howard to the same standard as a white coach would be racist. Like Al Capone, Howard is untouchable. He will not be punished. He will not be punished for his bad behavior. In a year or two, Michigan will fire Howard for NCAA tournament evasion. Mm. That's my fire. Now I'm going to fan these flames and just, I'm, I'm, someone has to help me understand. And, and Chris, Corey, tell me, I, I, I sent, do we have the tweets that I sent? Uh, let's, let's start throwing up some of these tweets that I sent Chris. Uh, I, I think I'm going to start with, Van Lathan Jr., uh, the excuses that just started rolling in and piling in for Jawan Howard almost instantly on Sunday. Uh, Y'all acting like Jawan Howard stormed the Capitol or something.
We're acting like Jawan Howard stormed the Capitol. So that's how, that's the depths we went to. We just watched Jawan Howard embarrass himself, embarrass his university, put his kids in harm's way because he provoked a brawl that will get some of his kids suspended. And somehow we're going to the Capitol and the insurrection. Y'all acted, y'all acted like Jerron Howard did an insurrection. What are we doing here? I, I get it. It's like people are defining progress as no standards for black people, particularly black elites who check that left wing liberal democratic box. How is this healthy? How are no standards healthy. There's no behavior that you can exhibit that we can't rationalize. How is this good? Standards, accountability, expectations are the key to empower, to inspiring people to their best selves. If you remove standards, accountability, and expectations, people's behavior will get worse. They will see themselves as untouchable, above everyone else. How dare you effing touch me? In a handshake line, it's customary. Grabbing an elbow, shaking a hand. Yes, the man wanted to stop Jawan Howard from blowing by him with this upset attitude. And so he gently grabbed his elbow. That's not a reason to get violent, particularly not 10 seconds later. I mean, we gotta be kidding ourselves and throwing up these excuses. It, 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 it makes us all look crazy. Like we have no standards for ourselves. We have no expectations for ourselves. Because if Krabenhoff, the white dude, had reached across and punched Jawan Howard, took a swing at, slapped, whatever you want to call it, there would be no debate about what should happen to him. And the same people caping up and defending and talking about insurrections wouldn't be saying this about Jawan Howard. I, I, Rex Chapman. And <laughs> I know Rex. I liked Rex. He's got this little Twitter stick that someone's paid him to do that's got him a million followers and rebuild his career. I get it. But I mean, just stop it. Rex Chapman tweeted out, sure, sure see a lot of the world's too soft now people mad at Jawan Howard. Jawan Howard made a fool of himself. It, it would be the equivalent, and we are doing this now. If people were tweeting out, Boy, that Whitlock, man, he's in great shape. He shouldn't lose a pound. Anybody talking about how fat Whitlock is doesn't know how fat so-and-so is. That's racism. There's fatter white people than Jason Whitlock. That's not someone on my team. That's not someone looking out for me and wants the best for me. That is my enemy. That is someone lying to me. That's someone trying to convince me that, oh, you're untouchable. Your mistakes, no consequences. I I'm I've known Juwan Howard since he was 19. He was on a different track than this. Jawan Howard as the angry person who can't control his emotions. That's not who Jawan Howard was on track to be. 
something has changed. I think there's an energy, a a cultural shift that's moving him in unhealthy direction, that's convinced him that he's untouchable and his behavior is irrelevant. You do that to anybody and they will start acting bizarrely, more entitled. Someone will touch their elbow and they will scream and yell about don't effing touch me and because someone touched my elbow, I have to protect myself. Juwan Howard is from Chicago and not the easy part of Chicago. He knows when somebody's being physically aggressive with him in a real way. We don't have to throw out common sense and know that this little bitty Wisconsin coach that grabbed his elbow. Jawan Howard is six foot nine, probably 260 pounds. Greg Gard, I don't know, five nine, five ten. I, I, I don't know. Maybe he's six foot. I don't know. But he's no threat to Jawan Howard physically, and Jawan Howard knows it. You know how I know that? Because he didn't swing at Greg Gard because he was smart enough and did the calculus that if I swing at this little bitty head coach, I'm really toast. Let me swing at this six foot four, six foot three. I don't know how tall, but let me swing at this assistant coach. Th this is lunacy. What we're do it's racist what we're doing. The people defending Jawan Howard, and I'm talking about the black people, are racist against black people. They think we're inferior, incapable of going through a handshake line after a loss. And so they want to make, oh, Greg Gard provoked it. He called that timeout with 15 seconds. I think we got the highlight of, of the end of the game, the, the final 30, 40 seconds, when Juwan has two starters in, these guys got all their bench players in uh, and their walk-ons, and Juwan Howard's pressing full court. Don't, don't we have that? Can we play that clip? Yeah, don't, don't we have that? Uh, yeah, we, they're taking... And Jawan's talking about he's protecting his players and that, you know, he thought the timeout was unfair. How about having your scholarship starters out there in a game that you've lost, beating up some walk-ons who get a 48-second reward for a week's worth of practice, and you're making it miserable. They can't get the ball up court, and so with 15 seconds, the guy calls a timeout to give him a whole new 10 seconds to get the ball past half court. Again, let them get it up court and take a shot. They're walk-ons. This is their big moment. But a timeout is unfair to my guys, and so I'm gonna take a swing on an assistant coach, and people are defending this, and people are acting like, oh, he got in LeBron's, uh, uh, Juwan's face. Juwan was trying to walk by. And he stopped the man. The man don't want to be touched. You can't touch a grown man. That mentality that Juwan Howard is projecting and we're defending is why our murder rate is astronomical. The leading cause of death for young black men, I believe 18 to 24, murder. And it's this mentality. Don't disrespect me. Don't you put your hands on me. Don't touch me. Oh, you stepped on my shit. Anything is an excuse to turn violent. And we've got a head coach, a leader of men. He's damn near 50. He's making five, six million dollars to lead young people, to talk them out of the stupid thoughts that run through young people's minds. This is why you have to fire Jawan Howard. 
or why he should be fired. It's he doesn't understand his job, his role. He doesn't understand the mentality that he has is poisonous for young people and himself. I can overlook and de- a, a suspension is appropriate for the swing he took at that coach. I'd have no problem. But the post game, where he just basically stood up and said, hey, I'm not qualified to be a leader of young men. I think if the opposing coach touches me, I have the right to swing on another coach in the handshake line. I, I, the people acting like firing Juwan Howard is completely off the table. It's an overreaction. And how dare people ask that? ESPN today had a discussion. And I kid you not. Should the handshake line be eliminated? Abolish the handshake line. It's right there with defund the police. The solution for every black problem is to defund or abolish something. Oh my God, Uh, George Floyd acted a fool and was hyped up on fentanyl and uh, disobeyed police orders for 30 straight minutes and put himself in harm's way. You know what the solution is? Defund the police. If George Floyd wants to pass out uh, counterfeit money and inject himself with fentanyl and be a menace to communities and people in, within his community, we gotta let that go. He's untouchable. Defund the police. Jawan Howard, the handshake line is a necessary, appropriate, positive aspect of competing in sports. You're teaching young men and boys and girls to compete like heck for an hour or two. And then when it's over, hey, we're all good. Hey, great job. Great game. Nothing per whistles over games over times off the clock. Now it's back to normal. It's great discipline. It's appropriate teaching. But let's eliminate it because Jawan Howard, he can't make it through a, a handshake line without snapping and, and swinging at somebody. That's the salute. This is insanity. Rex Chapman tweeted out, abolish the handshake line. It's played out. How many times have people, athletic teams, gone through a handshake line without incident? Trillions of time, probably. I mean, in the history of the handshake line, it's got to be in the trillions without an incident. But because Jawan Howard loses his cool, And it's a bad look for Jawan Howard and people think, oh, I'm defending black people because people were criticizing Jawan Howard. And so let's abolish the handshake line. I I, want to take a slight break here and and then I'm going to get back on it. But I want to tell you about, you know, you guys know my favorite sponsor. You have a problem, a meat problem. Well, our friends over at Good Ranchers will help solve your meat problems. They only sell 100% American meat sourced from local American farms. They sell beef that's USDA prime and upper choice and chicken that's better than organic and premium seafood. With Good Ranchers, you'll get steakhouse quality food delivered right to you in the comfort of your own home. Head over to GoodRanchers.com fearless today to have delicious American meals on your table 
Order now with the code FEARLESS to get $25 off your box. Now is the time to support American farms and ranchers. They're hurting and you're hungry. Solve both of those problems with a box of American meat. Go to GoodRanchers.com slash FEARLESS. Good Ranchers, American meat delivered. Support Good Ranchers. They support you, me, and our way of life. I'm going to keep ranting. Next. We must exist in a state of man glorious as we are protected by the red, the white, and the blue. But remember, the mind is the key. The fearless soldier pledges to place God first and foremost in his everyday endeavors of life. We, the fearless army, are one nation under God, indivisible, with freedom and a belief in the American dream. The men bold enough to join our movement comprise what we like to call the new dream team. We are leaders of our families, our churches, and of this nation. We reject the seeds of division that are planted by corporate media misinformation. We affirm that all men are created equal and are endowed with inalienable rights, which are granted by our Heavenly Father. We are bound by honor to accept God's challenge, to take the flag and lead, to cherish, to protect, and to nurture the life of our unborn seed. I am a fearless soldier, so shed no tears for me. I am not a victim. I am the man that God made me to be. Amen. All right, welcome back. Uh, I'm gonna continue on here on this Howard thing. I, I wanna play this clip that's got good audio. You can hear Howard cursing. It's a, it's a good clip to show you the, the confrontation between Greg Gard and Jawan Howard. L let's play the clip. I don't know how you defend that. I, 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 just, I, fr I just don't understand how you defend that. If Michigan, based off the Mark Turgeon incident from a year ago, if they wanted to fire Jawan just for this second incident all within a 12-month span, j just for that, he could legitimately be fired. I might give him the benefit of the doubt. He's an all-time Michigan great. Uh, you know, he, he, they can be loyal out of that. But when you throw on his comments afterwards, his justification of, of his behavior, and sitting there smugly as if he did nothing wrong, there was no apology given, none. I don't hear any debate that what Javon Howard did was wrong. I don't hear people debating that. I hear people, oh, he shouldn't be fired. Oh, y'all acting like he the insurrection. I, I, I hear all of that, but no one is saying, hey, what Javon Howard did was appropriate. So everybody agrees that what he did was wrong. Jawan Howard walked into that press conference held that press conference and went on for like six minutes. He took quite, he never apologized. And I'm sorry, this isn't the Bobby Knight era. All of these uh, analogies to Bobby Knight, well, Bobby Knight uh, did X, Y, and Z and they overlooked it. That era's done. Bobby Knight got fired from Indiana 
20 year, 22 years ago. That was the end of like, hey, the bad boy, the general, the military, drill sergeant there, that's over. It, it, it's no different than, it's people acting like, and that's why I brought up the Mad Men, the, the great TV show Mad Men, why I brought up that analogy. It's like, hey, men used to be able to come to work pat their secretary on the rear end, uh, flirt with whoever they wanted, have sex in the, and everybody just looked the other way. That's what we used to do in America. That era is over. And so if your boss comes in and slaps you on the ass and tries to have sex with you in the office, you can now get him fired just by making the allegation. You don't even have to prove it. That's how much things have changed. And so if you uh, want to go to work and act like you're Roger Sterling from Mad Men and go, well, Roger Sterling got away with it, everybody laughs you out of the building. It, it, it's like Jack Tatum, the, the Oakland Raiders' great safety, used to annihilate people coming over the middle, over the middle in football. That ear is over. Now, when you do what Jack Tatum used to do, they throw a flag. You're penalized. They kick you out of the game in college football. Things have changed. And so the whole Bobby Knight analogy makes no sense. It's an excuse. Hell, if, and again, just like I brought up, even before Bobby Knight, Woody Hayes got fired in 1978 for doing far less than what Jawan Howard did yesterday. Woody Hayes didn't spark a brawl between the two teams. He threw a punch at a guy in a full uniform and helmet. So all of this, oh, so-and-so, these white guys got away with it 30, 40 years ago. That's BS. There's a new standard, a new set of rules, and we all know no, there's no one with a brain who would de de deny that if Krabenhoff had hit Howard, he would have been fired Sunday. He might have been fired before he left the arena. And so these people that seem determined to put black people out on our own separate island where you get to play by a whole different set of rules. You don't have to make A's and B's in high school to get into the best college. You don't have to score this well on the SAT to get into whatever college you want. You don't have, if you're Eric B. Enemy, you don't have to interview well with people, with, with NFL owners, they should just give you a job because you're black. These are all people, the people making that argument, they don't want to compete. I do, because whenever I've seen any American, but, and I'm talking, any American, regardless of color, when I've seen them put their minds to competing and showing up and showing some discipline. They, generally speaking, have success. Period. Anything I've put my mind to and have tried to accomplish with real legitimate effort, I have accomplished it. And I'm black here in America. It's I don't need, I'm, I don't want to be a special Olympian. I find that repugnant and racist. I don't need a different race for me than everyone else. I don't need your capital B in Associated Press stories and everybody else that has adopted that ignorant, repugnant standard that when they write the word black, they put a capital B on it, but when they write the word white, 
It takes a small letter. I don't need some special distinction. I don't need a scarlet B. Just let me compete. Just don't inhibit my freedom. I, I, I would love to know. Well, and this is why uh, the leftists stay in their own little corner and, and never engage with people they disagree with. And this is why uh, my very legitimate point of view on this and other issues, the leftists call me a sellout, an Uncle Tom, a coon, or what, and like I'm the crazy person because I'm not afraid to compete against white people, Latino people, Asians, whomever. I don't need a special set of training wheels. And I came from nothing. I was not born on third base. My parents divorced. I know poverty. My dad didn't graduate high school. My mother was a factory worker. I came from nothing. I'm not one of these black elites sitting on TV and particularly, <clears throat> I gotta be careful, but I'm just not one of them. These people born on second base, third base, pretending like, oh, you know what I mean? I, I was in a conversation with someone this weekend and, and I, this will sound like I'm picking on somebody, but it just came to my head. It, it was <clears throat> the Malika Andrews at ESPN. She's half black, half white, pretends to be full black. She went to one of the most pre prestigious high schools in all of America. But she sits on TV and pretends like she speaks for working class black people. She don't know nothing about it. And there's a bunch of them just like her. A bunch, men and women. People that have been making millions of dollars for years. LeBron James, I mean, not LeBron James, Jawan Howard has been living a privileged, pampered life for about 30 years. And I'm, go I'm going all the way back to Michigan because I was there saw the nice SUVs and the apartments the Fab Five were all driving and living in. It's been 30 years of being treated like a king. And y'all act like, oh, those first 15 years in poverty just brought Trump the 30 years of wealth. No, no, it doesn't. And, and, and we act like there's some valor. Juwan Howard probably made $150 million in his NBA career. Probably making five or six million right now. If there's anybody who can handle the consequences of bad behavior and recover, it's Juwan Howard. He's already hit the lottery. He's already made hundreds of millions of dollars. If he gets slapped down with some real consequences, losing his job, he can actually recover it. Why, again, this goes, why are we constantly caping up for the rich and the wealthy and pretending like we're doing it for the poor and disenfranchised. It's a gimmick the elites use to look out for themselves. It's, I, I thought <clears throat> Michigan's athletic director on Sunday, I thought he put out a good statement uh, you know, he called Howard's behavior unacceptable. Uh, it, it, as of the time that I'm taping this show, 
I don't think there's been an announcement on whatever the consequences are uh, for Jawan Howard as of the time. Perhaps by the end of today, uh, they will have made an announcement, but if they're struggling with the decision, <clears throat> hats off to them. Because I, I thought this thing would be rubber stamp with a three, four game suspension and it, and it would be over by now already. But maybe someone has a brain and is like, hey man, can we really have the leader of our basketball program? Can we really have them defending and, and holding a press conference and acting like they did nothing wrong? The man sat in front of the media, never offered an apology, was arrogant, and said that some little man touching his elbow, he was protecting himself from. That's insanity. That's an acknowledgement that, hey, I'm in over my head. I'm not a leader of young people. I'm a young person who clearly needs counseling. He's got some serious anger management issues, and I'm telling you, I like Jawan Howard, but he needs help. He's not in position right now to help young people. He's leading them straight to hell. He carried them into a, a post-game brawl. <sighs> Play tomorrow. I think that's all I got. I'm out of breath. I'm exhausted. I'm gonna go take a nap. We'll see you tomorrow. Waiting for the countdown, coming off the breakdown, standing in line for freedom. Looking for a breakout, feeling like a standoff, nothing in life like freedom. Came in like a fighter, striking like a ladder, making all this moves for freedom. I want freedom. No negotiation, my system, no relation We all just wanna have freedom Sitting on the corner, never been alone I'm breaking my back for freedom Bless, we are living, get back We are receiving all the seed When we all wanna be free We want freedom